You ready? You ready? Good? All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Of course, we'd have to have a press briefing on Renee's last day, right? So I had to make sure we honored her time at JCPS with one final press briefing. So actually, I'm glad to be here today to be able to update you a little bit on the things that have happened uh, this week, our progress this week, and a little bit on the decision for uh, Monday afternoon going into Tuesday, because I think a lot of families um, you know, are, are interested in knowing about that. First of all, I want to take a moment. Um, I do this a lot, but I think it's important that we recognize the JCPS team, all the teachers out there, the educators. You know, I was in a school yesterday over at Semple Elementary, and just the enthusiasm that the, the teachers came to school with across the district to keep learning going has just been amazing. Um, many of them had their own kids in their classroom. They were working on NTI at the same time. Um, so it was just, it was inspirational to see that, uh, but it was um, definitely good to see the amount of kids that were learning with the teachers, interacting and engaging in effective instruction. And definitely this is our third time really to be in NTI when you look at over the course of three years. We went into it in March of 2020, and that was a brand new venture for everybody. I don't think anybody really knew what was happening. We were trying to get Chromebooks out. We didn't even know the word synchronous and asynchronous instruction at that time. That came about a few weeks later as we started talking about it, but that was a huge transition. And then moving into the beginning of the year for uh, August of 2020, that was a big challenge because teachers didn't know their students. Many of the kids were brand new to school. Uh, we were still learning. We were going more to that 2.0, that synchronous type class instruction. And so that was a big challenge. But this third round, this short-term NTI, we really feel like um, it has been in many ways seamless. So many of the teachers just move right into this synchronous instruction on Google Meets. The kids jumped on Tuesday morning and we're ready to go. So we're very proud of what our staff did. On Wednesday, just to give you some, some data on Wednesday, we had more than 1.4 million visits to Google Classroom. 1.4 million across the entire district. And we had more than a half a million Google Meets sessions on Wednesday, which are those live sessions with teachers teaching students, over a half a million in the district, uh, which I think is pretty impressive moving right in uh, to NTI to see that. We have another platform called Clever, which provides instructional materials for students. And we had over 700,000 visits to Clever um, throughout this week. So obviously kids are being very engaged. They're working hard. I think our faculty knows, our staff knows how to do NTI better and our students do as well. Um, and so it's not something obviously we want to be in. We want to be in in-person instruction, but I think we are providing that better than we have at any time in the past. I want to thank our nutrition service teams as well. You know, they have really stepped up. You know, one of the things that I think uh, we've learned all across the country over the past couple years is how much, how many services public education provides to students and to families across our communities. So on Tuesday and Thursday alone, the two site, the two days that we serve food, we served over 75,000 meals to JCPS families. And those, thank you to our nutrition service team. Met an awesome group of ladies yesterday outside of Semple Elementary that were passing out food to families and just so enthusiastic to do that. So um, thank you to those all over the district who are doing that, standing out in the cold and making sure that our families get the food that they need. And then, you know, keeping our services going on supporting families through COVID as well. And so we are extending COVID testing hours in the afternoon and evenings at all of our schools. And I'm really proud of this work that we've done. You know, I hear from, from other districts who may just open one or two testing sites across their district throughout the nation. But JCPS has 50 some locations for these sites uh, for testing. We've done the test to stay, the test to play program. Um, and we had more than 17,000 COVID tests were given to employees at work locations and our drive through locations. Uh, so we're very appreciative of all that work uh, that staff is doing as well. So as obviously we hope that we are gonna be in-person instruction this past week, you can see so much learning has taken place in JCPS, support for families, engagement with teachers and schools. So I'm very proud of that work. Um, you know, once again, I just have to reiterate, 
by law, we have 10 NTI days, 10 NTI days. We have used four of those days uh, this week. So that remains that we have six remaining NTI days. Uh, we have four days that we can forgive, those days that go beyond the 1,062 hours required by state statute. We don't know yet if we'll be forgiving those days or adding them on to the end of the year. We'll be asking our uh, board at a later date, making a recommendation once we make it through the winter months with weather and hopefully get past this Omicron um, surge. And so once again, the reason that we uh, were in NTI this week and we will continue to monitor the data is the amount of staff absences. Last uh, Thursday, we had over 1,100 staff absences, which was uh, between 15 and 20 percent of our entire staff, which makes it very challenging, obviously, to run oper and operate school in a safe manner. And that's what, you know, we have to make sure that we do. And so the 11 days away from school has given the opportunity for our staff to clear quarantine. But we know we're still having a lot of positive cases of staff and students throughout the county. Um, what we're going to be doing as we go through the weekend, I just want everyone to be understand and be clear about how we're monitoring this. Um, we will take a look at absences as they are reported for the first time late this afternoon, on Friday afternoon. Now, um, we will not get a good picture yet of what it will look like by Friday after, by this afternoon, but it will give us our first look. Uh, we're having schools report to us. The expected absences from their principals will be reporting expected absences on Tuesday. We'll do the same thing again on Sunday and Monday. And I want to reiterate to our families, we know it's frustrating and difficult. You know, I have a daughter who wants to be in school um, and, and tells me that every single day. But we got to make sure that we can do it safely. And we would love to be able to, to alert families as quickly as we possibly can. But this is a fluid situation. We'll have people testing over the weekends. We'll have people coming off of quarantine. So it's very difficult to know how many absences we will have. And especially, we have our central office staff covering classes um, where is needed. And so we have to know from them how many we'll have to be able to send out to there as well. So we'll be monitoring that and hope to and plan on making a decision by Monday afternoon for next week. Once again, uh, we only do have those six more days of NTI. We are in the Omicron surge right now. Hopefully, we'll see some evidence of some decline soon, which will get us back to a more normal schedule. Uh, but we will keep families posted. And I want to reassure families, you know, that um, our goal here is to get students back into person as quickly as possible. But we also have to make sure that we can do it safely and we can provide great instruction while we're doing that. And it's very difficult for schools to do that when they have 15 or 20 uncovered absences in a school. So we will be uh, making updates throughout the weekend um, and look forward to obviously bringing all of our kids back into school. Happy to take any questions that you have at this time. It's really still too early for us to tell. I mean, what we have seen is there has been continued to be positive cases reported throughout this week. So we have, um, you know, this transition period of a lot of people coming off of quarantine, but also some going on to that as well. So it's difficult at this time to know exactly what those numbers are. I'm very hopeful that we will be able to go back on Tuesday, but I also don't want to, you know, um, give false hope that we are going back and, and um, end up being out. But uh, once again, I'll say this, we only have six more days, so we have to use them wisely. If there is any way we can be back on Tuesday, uh, we will make that decision. Uh, until the governor signs it, obviously it does not become law. So um, they could be an option once it's signed by the governor, if he does sign that bill. Um, you know, remote days are a little challenging for a district our size, but we will obviously bring that into play as well once they become legal. 
Dr. Polio, you mentioned the millions of Google Meets. Can you speak a little bit more about student attendance for these NTI days, how it compares to previous years and what are previous, you know, NTI sessions and why you think that is? Yeah, it's, well, once again, it's difficult right now to give uh, attendance or what, you know, the participation numbers in NTI because we report them to KDE five days later. Um, so schools are still in the process of reporting that. You know, once again, when you look at that data, those students, you know, it can be synchronous and asynchronous when it comes to the work that they're doing. So a child working from home may count as participating. So we'll know that in five days. All I can kind of tell you is right now, anecdotally, what we're hearing from uh, schools is attendance has been much better than it's ever been um, in NTI, especially with synchronous instruction. I think kids are more used to that, you know, and I can say firsthand from walking around Semple Elementary yesterday and seeing teachers, you know, and just screen full of young kids um, in each and every classroom I went into and engaged kids, uh, it seems much higher. But we'll have that exact data uh, later next week for you. That it? All right, guys, thanks. Have a great day.